Ideas. There are ideas that change the way we work. In other centuries, they would have called it magic. Ideas that got us connected. We'll hold the line a minute. That made us communicate better with each other. Hello? Hello? Ideas that got smarter and smarter and smarter. They are the ones that caused revolutions. Goodbye, David. And others that seem like a thing of the past now. There are the ones that are obsolete and ideas that promised us freedom, but in the end delivered us nothing but stress that we tried to compensate with funny ideas. We thought of something different. A simple idea that turns idle workspace into places where you connect with companies, where you share knowledge with other creative minds or digital nomads. Where you are, is where you work. You spend fewer hours on the road and you gain precious time for a better work-life balance. It's called Work Hero. Is it a game changer? I beg your pardon? We like to think so. But we'll let you be the judge of that. Check out Work Hero on workhero.com. Work Hero, connecting space and knowledge. Are you an ambitious business owner? Cosme can help you move forward in a supportive business environment. Cosme is the EU program for the competitiveness of small and medium-sized enterprises. It helps you access finance, reach new markets and find the right business partners. Cosme gives financial support such as loans and venture capital. Find out more on the Access to Finance portal. Funding is also available through calls for proposals, also known as grants and calls for tenders. For grants, the European Commission selects projects contributing to EU policy aims, like sustainable tourism. In calls for tenders, it hires business services to support its activities. If you are interested in applying, choose the funding that is most suitable for you check the eligibility criteria and start working on your proposal. Make sure it is consistent, realistic and clearly defined. Find calls for proposals and tenders on the Funding and Tenders portal. Search for financial opportunities in your country on the Access to Finance portal. La Fundación Finnova con el proyecto CIRCOAX busca empresas y autónomos innovadores para promover la economía circular en el mundo textil y de la moda.
I'm delighted and I hope we'll be able to do it, to do it again and also that the solutions which were showcased here can maybe inspire real life solutions in the future. Es un honor que hayan contado con nosotros como aceleradora con nuestro programa Startup Europe Accelerator en el primer hackathon con el director general de innovación de la Comisión Europea para soluciones en, en el campo de cambio climático y eh, reducción de emisiones. I also congratulate uh, Finova, uh, which was part of the winning team, a team which um, worked on a really interesting solution to make construction at long last sustainable. Well done. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this online webinar about Nest Style European Union, transforming the textile and fashion industry into a circular economy model. 
This is this event is in the framework of the World Circular Economy Forum. To get to know circular economy solutions for the transformation of the fashion and textile industry. My name is Juan Marrevuelta, CEO of Finnova Foundation. It's a Spanish Belgian foundation for the promotion and development of innovation, entrepreneurship, and European Union funding and European Union le legislation. On the World Circular Economy Forum and Circular Economy, what we have to highlight is that the aim of this international forum is to present the main global circular economy solutions to try to inspire and to help to impose this model for the year 2050. To this end, they are holding parallel events through, throughout the year 2021, we are ending, and our online webinar was selected to contribute here. The goal of the circular economy is that the life cycle of products is extended. Measures taken by the whole value chain, such as a waste, waste production, eco design, and reduce cold safe European Union companies' money, and while and also reducing total annual greenhouse gas emissions. Currently, the production of materials we use every day accounts for 45% of the CO2 emissions. Moving towards a more circular economy could deliver benefits such as creating 700,000 jobs in the European Union alone by 2030. What is social innovation is a key issue for recycling fashion and style. On the event. Today, we are holding this webinar to discuss about circular economy in the second most polluting industry, fashion and the style. There, there is an urgent need to implement a change in the production and consumption system that could guarantee the sustainability of the sector and the environment. You will have an inauguration panel with Mrs. Natalia Martinez Paramo, head of unit of the in the DG Grow in, in, in the in, sorry in the Eismea in the Cosme Pillar, and uh, we will try to to share with you a fruitful panel on the four projects co-funded by her unit with a debate on where the power of change lies. In the end, we, ha we will have break breakout rooms for each project, in case you want to interact with our project speakers. In our opinion, it can be very helpful for new projects and initiatives in, in different calls as the life. During the event, you have Slido to share your thoughts and ideas we invite you to participate and to and doing networking. Let's start giving the floor to Mr. to Mrs. Natalia Martinez Paramo. And a final message. We are in the first year of the new financial period, 2021-2027. That is the um, is the, the we are in the middle of next generation, the biggest recovery, economic recovery plan in the history of humans. Uh, if we want, we can compare with the Marshall's plan. It's 12 times more in terms of GDP, what, 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 what suppose the plan, the Marshall's plan. Then we are in, in the right time to change behaviors and the economy model in the fashion and the style industry. We will have 750,000 million euros for 
Green Deal uh, for digital projects and for this economic recovery plan with that social dimension. Let's do it together. Um, you will have, in, on behalf of the one of that four projects, we are very proud as Finova to be part of them. Is the the project uh, Circoax that try to identify the best circular economy projects and the best social innovation projects. That's it. Thank you very much. And starting, Natalia, you have the floor. Natalia Martinez Paramo. Thank you, Juanma. Let me put the video on. Can you see me? Can you see me? Yes. Good. And can you hear me? Yes. Good, 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 good. So let's. Uh, uh, good afternoon to everyone. I'm really delighted to be here today. And I want first to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to introduce you to our work and how we are supporting SMEs in the fashion sector in the transition towards a circular economy. As Juan Ma said, I'm head of unit at the European Innovation Council and small and medium-sized enterprises agency, AISMEA, of the European Commission. And I belong, I'm an official from DG Group. So what I'm in particular responsible for, I'm responsible for COSME. And what is COSME? Is the AU program developed to support the competitiveness of SMEs and which has now become a pillar in a broader program, the ambitious single market program. So with this in mind, I would like to say a few words about the policy context for the transition towards circular economy and walk you through the work we are doing in to support SMEs in the fashion and textile sector. So concentrated in the policy context to towards a circular economy, I believe we all agree that this planet does not have unlimited resources and that we need to learn how to use what we have much more carefully than in the past. In fact, as you know, our commissioner for the environment, oceans and fishery, Virginius Sinkevicius said, we only have one planet Earth. And yet by 2050, we will consume it as if we had three. So more than ever, we need to move away from our linear model, extract, produce, and through. And the European Commission is committed to supporting these transitions towards a low carbon and circular economy. The transformation of our companies toward more sustainable, and resources efficient business models helps protect the environment and provides a competitive advantage by creating important cost savings and boosting innovation for sustainability. In March 2020, as you know, the Commission adopted a new circular economy action plan, one of the main building blocks of the European Green Deal. Europe's new agenda for sustainable growth. So with measures along the entire life cycle of products, including textiles, the new action plans what it aims to make our economy fit for a green future, to strengthen our competitiveness while protecting, of course, the environment and give new rights to consumers. So this recent development are of major relevance as fashion, as you know, is unfortunately one of the most polluting industry globally. In the last 15 years, clothing production has approximately doubled. Large amount of non-renewable resources are extracted to produce clothes and are often used just for one as a short period and after which the material are lost in landfills or incinerations. So the fashion industry can play a significant role in reaching the objective of climate neutrality by 2050, as you know, is a target set by our president, uh, uh, Ursula von der Leyen in the European Green Deal. So the scale of opportunity is immense. 
due to the size of the fashion industry. You know, 5 million people, 5 million people are directly employed in the fashion value chain. And in addition, 1 million people are employed in the high-end industries, making them one of the most vibrant and creative sectors in Europe. And related to this, the Commission will adopt in a few days, I mean, in the first quarter of 2022, an AU strategy for sustainable textiles. Textile consumption is the fourth highest pressure category in the EU regarding the use of primary raw materials and water after food, housing and transport, and fifth for the greenhouse gas emissions. So the strategy aims to ensure that the textile industry recovers from the COVID-19 crisis, but how? In a, in a sustainable way, making it more competitive, applying circular economy principles to production, products, consumption, waste management, and secondary raw materials, and of course, directing invest research and innovation. It will support technologies, including through digitalization related to innovative textiles, tracking the release of microplastic, manufacturing and recycling process to contribute to the digital and green transition. But this is not all. Our path towards a sustainability future is also guided by international agreements that provide solid framework for a global actions, such as UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and of course, the Paris Agreement. So, what are the good news? The good news are that we are going in the right directions. A large number of European companies are already implemented a non-linear model. Almost three out of four enterprises, so 75, 73%, have taken measures related to the circular economy in the last few years. So as I said, this is a good news because we are in the high direction. And what? How EU has supported SMEs. The European Union has been supporting business for many years through policies, strategies, and programs to put SMEs at the center. So SMEs account for 99 of the business fabric in Europe and 77 of their jobs. So we can say that they are backbone of the European economy. And we want them to be driver behind the recovery from this COVID-19 pandemic. And with EU funding programs such as Horizon Europe and COSME, the program that my unit runs, Europe has made a significant contribution to improving the sustainability and circularity of products. So this brings me to one of the programs ASMEA is responsible for, as I said, single market program slash COSME pillar. So how COSME, the program, let me repeat, for the competitiveness of small and medium-sized enterprises has support SMEs. So this program is not new. It has been managed for our agency and in particular in my unit for the past seven years. And now we are starting, as Juan might say, the new financial period. So we are now uh, uh, initiated, started, the seven next years. So when it comes to support of SMEs in the fashion sector in particular, ASMEA has been managing really several actions. But let me just say today two examples. The first one is the Worth Partnership Project. Let me tell you that is the sole initiative, AU initiative where designers, SMEs, manufacturers and tech providers work together to develop innovative, design-oriented business ideas. The project was launched on 2017, and due to its success, we are now carrying on its second edition. So this demonstrates that it was a very good project and very success project. Textile and clothes and clothing. It says that my connection is unstable. Can you hear me or is it okay? Yes. Okay. We can listen to you. 
Okay, so the, the project focuses on lifestyle industries, including textiles and clothing, footwear, leather and food, furniture, and home decoration, jewelry, and accessories. So you see the range of activities. And Ward's work at fostering design skills and sustaining the AU manufacturing based on knowledge. So through a series of successful international partnerships, it addresses the need for strong cross-sectorial collaboration and innovation amongst creative industries and manufacturing SMEs. And so let me give you some interesting facts and figures about this project. Over four years, Worth selected 152 transnational partnerships involving 350 partners from 34 AU cosmic countries via three different goals. They received financial support. They received coaching on business uh, strategy and technology development. They received legal advice on intellectual property rights and protection. They were allowed to participate in exhibition and networking and also professional links. But most importantly, words led to build long-term partnerships. So six of every 10 partners continue working together. So this demonstrates how successful the project has been in triggering the formation of long lasting business collaboration and developing venture building capacity. And now World Partnership Project 2 was launched last June, as previously mentioned. And what is the idea of World 2? Is to strengthen the competitiveness of SMEs in the fashion industry and lifestyle sector, increasing their innovation capacity and help them in the transition towards climate neutrality and digital leaderships. The first call for proposal was published in October and it's dedicated to the principle of the new European Bajos Initiative, which seeks to develop more sustainable, inclusive, and beautiful living environment. And if you are interested, you have until February 2 next year to apply. So the deadline is February 2nd, 2022. Another example is the call for proposal on circular fashion, which funded four projects. These four projects were launched in January this year, January 2021, and also participating in today's event. So this call, what it aims to help the fashion industry become more sustainable and turn its business model into a circular one. But to do so, what is crucial? To enhance the competitiveness and to improve the environmental performance of the European fashion industry. And all this can be achieved by building capacities and supporting small businesses, SMEs, designers, and startups in the sector. So thanks to this COSME project, more than 120 promising SMEs, designers and startups in the fashion industry will receive direct capacity building, technical and financial support. And the objective is clear. We want to help them. We want to help SMEs developing and bringing to the market their innovative application, their innovative product, their processes, or their ideas for sustainable and circular fashion. Being circular in the fashion industry will generate important cost saving and it will boost innovation and sustainability, which is indeed a competitive advantage. So to give you an idea about the impact of this call, these four projects involve 25 European organizations coming from 15 member states and cover all European regions. So ASMEA is following very, very closely and monitoring their implementation. We look forward to have good practice and recommendation from them to help the sector to become more sustainable and more circular. So we are thrilled to see the new market opportunities for SME providing sustainable solutions in the fashion industry. Let me now move to the program where finance everything, the single market programs and its SME pillar. As from 2021, ASMEA managed the SME pillar under the single market program 
uh, with a total budget for the single market program of 4,200 million euros. So this is impressive. And the SM, SME pillar, small and medium sized enterprise is the successor of COSME. And where we focus primary, support and SMEs. How? By action same to ease access to new markets, to improve condition for business, and encourage the development of an entrepreneurial culture. So for the next years to come, because we have just started, we will run until 2021, what we expect to launch more call for proposal in the textile sector, to do what? To continue helping and supporting the industry to fully recover from the COVID pandemic. But also not just for this, to accompany the to become more sustainable and more digital. So, as you know, we are in a moment of transition in a world that has gone through significant changes in the last two years. But despite this, I'm pleased to say that our mission will be the same, to continue providing high quality support and an effective service to SME and entrepreneurs, and to strengthen the EU sectors they use economy, competitiveness, innovation capacity, creation growth, and sustainability. And at the agency, believe me, and let me reassure that we will make all efforts to continue supporting SMEs in the fashion sectors whenever we can. And in this sense, I'm really confident that today's event will represent an essential step to enhancing networking and collaboration not only among the four projects, but also among all the participants. And quoting the American poet Maya Angelou, we delight in the beauty of the butterfly, but rarely admit the change it has gone through to achieve that beauty. So let's invest in making the necessary changes that will lead us to long-term sustainability. I'm sure, I'm confident, that together we will manage to face any difficulty. So let me conclude by wishing you all an interesting and productive and excited event. Thank you. Juanma, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mrs. Martinez Paramo. As we have seen, the European Union is a leading institution in promoting policies very much. of the planet. In addition, through various programs, they fund innovative ideas that help small proposals to go further and be part of the change. One of these programs is the COSME program that Martinez Paramo runs in the European Commission ASMEA. Uh, our next style generation through COSME, four outstanding projects have been co funded and are working to strengthen a European fashion and textile business fabric under this circular economy model. The names, you will have the possibility of interact today after, are Circular in a Booster, S for Fashion, Fashion for Chains, and Small but Perfect. They scale innovative proposals based on transnational cooperation and give our small and medium enterprises the recognition they deserve as promoters of resilient and disruptive businesses. All of us, our projects have catered in the cluster Nest Steel Generation, an initiative for the dissemination, networking, of relevant information for the sustainable fashion and the style industry implemented by Finova Foundation. Through this platform, information re regarding the four COSME projects approved in the circular fashion call will be shared, pre-release events and calls for proposals. Allow me to explain one example. We are, we are now working in the next live uh, call of the European Commission, DG Environment, in the field of en environmental pilot projects. We are talking of a 
projects of up to 2 million euros uh, subsidy, uh, subsidize up to 60%. Why not? To start working in that. Allow me to explain that in this period, 2021-2027, life program means 5,300 uh, 5, million euros. Okay, for environment, climate change, and also uh, renewable energy, or what is energy efficiency. Let's do it together. There are a lot of different tools. Uh, now, in this session, we have participants also from some public organizations as provinces or regions interested in sustainability in fashion. Why not to start working in other financial tool as is Interreg from the DG region that allows to share best practice in different regions, why not, in the field of saving experience to diminish the uh, pollution and contamination in water or circular economy. Okay, that means we have from now 10 years, because this period is seven years, but we have to know that for the rule M plus three, we will have three years more. We will have a de de 10 years with a lot of financial for changing the economic model. Let's do it together. And is one of the purpose of this of this meeting allowed to us to uh, do networking for new financial projects that allows to to um, to implement new projects we will start of the slido and see what are your thoughts on the webinar feel free to share them with us let's also go through the second panel on European projects. It will be moderated by Raquel Raineri, president of the Textile Association in North Carolina. Rachel, good afternoon. We have 17 seconds I'm in, on my time. And thank you very much. And the floor is yours. You have eight seconds for you. <laughs> Anma, thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. Again, my name is Rachel Ranieri. I'm from the Wilson College of Textiles at North Carolina State University. And it is my honor to be here and moderate this panel of these four cost me projects as they debate their ideas and share their projects. We all know that sustainability and the shift to circularity is a multifaceted endeavor. Um, so our round table today will dive into where the power to act and make change lies. And and we really want to welcome audience participation during the roundtable. So uh, we have a few Slido questions you can access through the QR code on your screen. Um, while we are receiving introductions from each of these amazing projects, um, we would like to welcome you to think about the first question. Um, what do we need more of to achieve the 2030 SDGs? Behavior change or technology? And as we are thinking about and answering those, I would like to introduce our four different projects. Uh, first, we have Ingrid Willems from S4 Fashion. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for having me here um, and for being part of this amazing um, afternoon, this webinar. Thank you, Ingrid. Would you like me to present a little bit what S4 Fashion is about? Please, please tell us about S4 Fashion. Okay, perfect. Um, so S4 Fashion is one of the Cosmo projects very much focused about inviting SMEs um, to be part of this, this change towards a more circular and a greener fashion industry. We're very much um, interested mainly on our side to invite designers to be part of this 
change and the shift that needs to happen. Um, of course, we're inviting transnational teams um, or we did the open call. That's a little bit of pity for the people who are still looking for funding. Our open call closed and we're at this moment in the process of analyzing all the amazing projects that have applied um, and we're looking forward for the SendPit day that is happening uh, early next year. Nevertheless, overall, um, just to give you a, a quick indication, our purpose mainly is to um, go beyond the academic research and, and all the analysis that has been done and really go into very empiric results of companies as a means designer that are working on circular solutions that are really implementing those. And what we aim to do is to bring all this expertise, experience that is out there in the field um, and share that via S4 Fashion and the S4 Fashion platform that we have built with as many people as possible. Because in the end, we want to inspire, we want to interact and we want to generate impact on a circular fashion side. Excellent. So you're bringing that information to the consumer to be able to make uh, background uh, decisions, yes? Well, our main focus is to, to bring it to designers today. We feel that designers are still quite insecure about what is circularity, what is really circular green what is not so there is there is a lot of education still to do we see that younger uh, fashion designers learn a lot more about those things so we feel that there is an educational part to be done and that you can learn a lot from peers so that is what we really want to stimulate and then we feel that many designers in larger organizations uh, of course need to convince their bosses that it is important to go circular that there might you know that that it is a good way to go there um, and at the same time they are for us the ones who are really interacting with all the different parties to really make it happen so we feel they're really the ones to act and to create impact excellent so you're giving the power to the designer exactly <laughs> wonderful thank you ingrid um, our next presenter is fiori from small but perfect and fiori i'm going to ask you to say your last name for me <laughs> Zahiropoulou, <laughs> it's a Greek name. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation of Small But Perfect uh, today to your event. Um, so Small But Perfect is uh, a collaboration among Fashion Revolution, Welfare Trade Organization, University of Bocconi, Impact Hub, um, the Fashion Council in Sweden, WLY, um, Innovation uh, Experts, uh, and, um, and a partnership of, uh, with uh, Common Objective, uh, Kaleidoscope, also known as Neonit, and University of Portsmouth. And you because it's a very big consortium. So small but perfect, uh, as was very well um, explained by Natalia, is uh, has a, as an objective to support the transformation of uh, 28 SMEs, uh, collab collaborative partnerships of SMEs into circular um, and sustainable um, ventures. Uh, so we, uh, our, uh, our call for proposals also closed uh, and sometime in September, we have already selected 28 uh, um, our diagnostic tool to really understand where everybody is because our approach is to offer uh, as customized coaching uh, and uh, knowledge and support to the SMEs as we can. Uh, the program is uh, being launched uh, 1st of February. It's a program uh, that consists of... <laughs> you're, you're muted. Okay. Um, uh, boot camps, uh, online modules, mentoring, and then there is an R&D phase uh, that the University of Portsmouth is uh, leading, uh, providing access to the labs of uh, the ENZIM labs of the university. And finally, the open studio, 
uh, which is a fashion open studio is a um, fashion revolution um, uh, reply to catwalks um, and fashion weeks. Uh, so this is the support to the SMEs, but uh, we believe that um, to have, make a change, we need to accelerate also the incubators. So we are also accelerating eight uh, incubators. To us, incubators could be anything from fashion councils, fashion weeks, um, incubation programs, accelerators in Europe, and we want them to uh, be able to continue uh, the, the offering of uh, specialized services to fashion enterprises in becoming uh, circular and sustainable. Um, and finally, uh, advocacy is also uh, very important uh, to us. So we are, we are holding policy dialogues, uh, both in Greece and Berlin, and our last uh, one will be yeah. Brussels uh, to the to the ACNEP, um, and of course uh, a creation of a network uh, together with common objective that is the platform of, of uh, more than fifty thousand members um, of uh, the supply chain of sustainable fashion. Uh, in there, uh, we have created a space for called small but perfect uh, that uh, will be. Um, for all our members. So we are at this stage, uh, we are campaigning the call uh, for uh, policymaker, SME stakeholders of the circular fashion ecosystem to join a small but perfect uh, community in uh, common objectives, the hub and the circles. Um, and you can find our call, our uh, registration form in small but perfect uh, website. Thank you. Excellent, Fiori. So you are very much empowering the SMEs to take part in the change that we would like to see. So our next um, project is Fashion for Change, represented by Michael Learman. Yes, hello. Hi. Oh, I see myself. I hope everybody else sees me. Yeah. Yes, thanks also for having us. Us because I'm going to present with um, a colleague of mine, uh, Justina, who will be basically covering the most juicy part of our little intro, which is the accelerator program. And the good news, what Ingrid uh, referred to, is that we are, the, the, the projects are designed um, in a way that we are actually with Fashion for Change the next in line with an accelerator program. So I'm really happy to announce for the first time to everybody that we are on track to start the open call next year. Mark your agendas January 10th, we'll go online. And um, if you don't mind, because I see we have a little bit of time before we break into the different sessions. Maybe since this is a project that is really taking big relevance now since the open call is is um, upcoming. Maybe a quick uh, few slides, not to overwhelm you, so you know who we are, what we are doing, and also a little bit the time, uh, the timeline. So I'm gonna take my take the control. Just a quick uh, thumbs up if you see my screen. Right. Do you see my screen? We've got it, Michael, yes. Wonderful, thank you. So as you see, my name is Michael Lahmann. I'm uh, working at Ecopreneur. We are the European Federation of Sustainable Businesses. And with me in the background, uh, I'm introducing also Justina, uh, who is the sustainability consultant at Catalista Ventures. But she might say a few words about her. We are a consortium of four, with us and me being in Brussels um, and uh, Catalista, and the two other partners are in the Baltics, so in, um, in uh, Estonia and Latvia. So very quickly, I think everybody has understood that this is a call with four different projects who are more or less doing, I don't know who is doing this, thank you Alberto, um, doing the, uh, um, sharing the same goal. Yeah, somebody has, I don't know if, this happens again. Somebody I don't know about this. With a Zoom bombing, they call it. I think that person needs to be taken out. Yeah. Yes, I don't know if this, this is really Alberto, but uh, 
Otherwise, let please. somebody, yeah, and don't let uh, new people come in if you could do Okay, that. thank you. So anyway, so that's what you, I think, understood, that it's a call with four, four projects who both share the same goal. So that's why I said it's one call, four projects, but one goal, which is to support really 120 in total designers and startups and SMEs uh, who are really, really into a responsible fashion um, to help them incubate, accelerate, and so on their, their, their projects. So um, my controls still work unless I'm a little bit afraid that somebody's taking care of my, of my controls. But anyway, so the, the objectives, as you see them, is, are really fourfold. Like for the, for the other projects, of course, um, it's about how to enable the startups, the designers and the SMEs. Um, uh, to find helpful information and, and contacts, you know, to help them launch their or scale up uh, the sustainable business project. Uh, secondly, it's about really how, how can we uh, use these tools or can these uh, important methodologies and tools be used um, and how can they be provided in the most uh, useful uh, manner. Um, then it's about supporting the companies with grants. So it also has also a financial component, of course, highly important. So um, how can the different projects provide financial, uh, be provided financial support in individual mentoring, um, coaching to, inst to, to stimulate the sustainable fashion projects? And then last but not least, um, also how to maximize the impact at long-term, meaning how can we ensure that the findings, um, the conclusions and the tools that we have developed during these two to three year projects, each of, of, of us, um, are, are actually sustainable by themselves. I and mean, how can we reach, how can they reach and benefit uh, a maximum stakeholders from the fashion industry also beyond the time of our, of our project. So that's really one of the objectives. So it's not just limited to two or three years, but we really try to find, get the insights, some kind of your know, conclusions, how we can uh, put this to a, to a higher level to a, and scale it up uh, for the benefit also of, of you know, companies that might or might not participate actively. So quick run through the partners. So these are the people behind the, our call. As I said, there's Civita uh, from Estonia. There's Catalista Ventures. Justina will have a few words from Lithuania. We have the Estonian Academy of Arts from Estonia. I actually had the, the privilege to visit them despite the corona, corona situation last month. Um, so it's really impressive what these guys are doing. We have a Singleton and then we have us, I said already a few words. So now introducing very shortly the, the timeline. So as you see, we started this year in January. We did um, a kind of a market analysis. Um, out, out of it came an interesting uh, market study. We created a virtual knowledge hub, which is on our website, which basically includes, which is went live in September and will be ongoing. So we invite you to take a look. It basically contains a wealth of growing resources, contacts, company profiles, tools, best practices, and so on. So we, I'm inviting everybody to take a look and you can also add your own initiative, you can add your own company. If you're listening in, if you're a company or you know, um, have, have an interesting resource. Um, and of course now uh, the growth program, which starts, as I said, January 10th uh, with a fashion des a sprint designer team we call it. Fashion sprint basically means we collect or invite companies to present their ideas, their projects that would then be um, selected eventually and promoted over the next um, yeah, uh, one and a half, two years, which is then called the Accelerator Program. Just to finalize, this is just a quick view on the, the website, how it looks at this moment. We had a report, I invite you to read it. It's uh, called um, the, uh, as you see it, maybe it's too small, the sustainable fashion designer startups and SMEs in the circular economy. It basically uh, is, is based on a series of interviews. We interviewed 30 uh, representatives from the industry. We did a, also a quantitative research, of course, desktop research, gathering all the bits and pieces to, to well, corroborate basically our case. Um, and uh, not surprisingly enough, uh, we find what you can read on the screen uh, that there is definitely a need for resources, access to resources for SMEs, uh, startups, and these young designers. Really practical hands-on report that proves to be uh, uh, useful because within all this world of information, they really need um, a source or a hub, let's call it, 
but they can really rather quickly and for free uh, find the resource, the partner, the supplier, uh, the certificate, the training program, the accelerator program, et cetera, et cetera, that they would need to get, get the business off the ground. Also interesting that it's really about people, people to people. It's not just a database. Uh, it, we found that it's really necessary for them to get in personal contact, get a personal mentor, a personal uh, build a personal relationship of trust. So they have a supplier that they can trust if there is a new wave coming, if there is some kind of crisis, the people that, uh, people that they can rely on. So that's why we um, strongly advise already at this point, uh, these these, uh, these these companies to reach out, of course, uh, and um, get um, in touch with their local um, uh, competence centers, could be a chamber of commerce, could be a circularity hub, could be really uh, a local competence center, learn about uh, the, the possibilities, the resources, the experiences and so on uh, of, of circular fashion, get inspiration and know-how. And of course, what we are going to do with our project is um, exactly that. So we're doing this in a laboratory approach. We are trying to, of course, build this, or we build this database where they can get the resources. But we also have, of course, within the accelerator program, we offer this, this possibility of take, uh, getting these people to know and putting them by the hand of experts who can then explain to them in practice how their business case might be uh, optimized, how they can get some build some capacity, some know-how about how to market their their projects, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll leave it with this and I want to overdo it, but um, I'm happy to share these few slides with you later. And now, as I said, uh, proudly uh, announced, sorry, <laughs> Justina, uh, announcing Justina, who will guide you to the phase three, uh, which is the accelerator program um, next month. Thank you. And thanks. I will have Justina to be quite quick so that we can yep. enter the last project. And we will have breakout rooms after to continue the conversation. And I want to get to the round table. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot for having us. Uh, I'm Justina from Catalysta Ventures, one of the partners of the Fashion for Change project. So being mindful uh, about the time, I'll just quickly mention a couple the most key details that our audience should, should remember, because as Michal mentioned before, we are announcing the open call in January. So on the 10th of January, uh, you will have the opportunity to apply to the program. And the deadline of, uh, of the program is 19th of April. So, so a couple of months for you to, to, to apply and you can always reach out to us if you have any questions about the program or whether you know any questions regarding the application process and, and so forth. And I just wanted to emphasize one uh, very unique angle of our project is that uh, this open call is shaped not only for the designers, but also for SMEs and startups. And we, we see that uh, partnerships can be very val valuable when, when aiming to sustainable and circular fashion. So this is a very unique opportunity for, for the applicants uh, to apply and be part of this project. And 25 teams selected in the hackathon phase will, will, will go to the accelerator program and each team will get 10,000 euros support as well as mentorship on business and sustainability. And at the end of the accelerator, we will also have um, a phase uh, that will help applicants to be more investor readiness. So, so we will arrange uh, meetings with investors just to make sure that uh, you know their growth and uh, their journey towards sustainability would continue beyond, uh, beyond the accelerator program. So uh, the final five teams will get, will get that chance to, to meet the investors as well. And if Michal, you could move to the last slide, uh, just we wanted to showcase um, our contacts and also you can follow us on, on social media, on LinkedIn, please reach out. If you have any questions, we would be more than happy to, to answer them and, and help you in the application process. Excellent. Thank you, Mikhail and Justina. And um, we'll have more opportunity, as I said, in the breakout rooms to continue those discussions. That's that's excellent to hear. And finally, our last introduction will be from the Circular Inner Booster Program with Sharam Yalda. 
Mm. Hello, I think Mercedes, you go ahead. Uh, you're doing the, yeah, Mercedes is going to present the project. Thank you. Uh, if you can put her on the screen because she's the coordinator from IED and I will come in later for the Q&A. So it was a slight change. Thank you. Excellent. Welcome, Mercedes. Thank you very much, Rachel. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, wait a second, thank you. Uh, so I'm Mercedes Marim, project manager at the, uh, I, at the Innovation Lab of the uh, European Institute of Design, which is the leading partner of the consortium that managed this circular in a booster project of the COSME program. And um, uh, well, I'm going to present you the project on behalf of all the, the consortium. Do you see my screen with no problem? Yes, we do. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, well, uh, this is one of the of the Cosme project that um, is um, uh, whose objectives are aligned with those detailed before by by Natalia. So, uh, the general objective of the project is to use circularity in its broader sense to respond to, to those uh, challenges uh, she has mentioned. And the specific objective is to, uh, to help to contribute to the transformation of uh, uh, some companies in the fashion and textile industry into sustainable, circular and regenerative. The project was conceived by a, an international consortium of entities specialized in uh, these uh, fields that you can see uh, here below. The consortium is led by the European Institute of uh, Design, which I represent, which is a design school of Italian origin with more than 50 years of experience training uh, in design creativity in Spain, Italy, and Brazil. And um, also Texfor, which is the largest confederation of textile industry in Spain, with, uh, with who has a strong uh, cross-border uh, relationships, also with Finova Foundation that works for the development of innovation and entrepreneurship at a European level. Also with Circula from France, which is a design agency that helps companies to implement circularity. With uh, the Circular Project from Spain, which is a pioneering project in a sustainable fashion and last, but not least with Human Nation from Spain too, whose mission is to accelerate the transition to the new 4.0 economy and whose founder, Salam Yalda, uh, who is uh, present here, is the coordinator of uh, this Circular in Augusta project. The project has a duration of two years. We are now finishing the first one. The budget is uh, more than 1 million uh, euros. And in order to achieve these goals, the project includes the launch of an accelerator called Circo Axe, which uh, uh, has been thought from a circular, cooperative, uh, uh, collaborative, and co design uh, perspective. This accelerator aims on the one hand to select, select 30 innovative and collaborative projects submitted by uh, transnational partnerships consisting of one lead SME uh, that must belong to one of the five categories you see on the screen together with one or a maximum of four uh, partners uh, from a different eligible country. We launched a call for proposal from uh, July to October on our website, circoax.eu, and uh, we receive very interesting sustainable business ideas with uh, high potential for innovation. All of them have been evaluated through a two phases selection um, procedure. The phase one includes the eligibility criteria and then the uh, quality assessment for the eligible proposal under criteria of excellence impact implementation made by uh, members of the steering group of the consortium who are experts in, uh, in these areas. And then uh, the shortlist project in the second phase were invited to uh, the interviews and uh, all the interviews uh, will be finished this week and uh, next Wednesday, 22nd of December, all applicants will be informed about the results uh, by email and we will also publish uh, on the CIPWATS uh, website and social media uh, channels. And then, uh, on the other hand, after the selection, CIPWATS aims to provide those 30 entities with an accelerator program of eight months. 
which uh, will start on March uh, next year, and it includes three uh, types of uh, support, financial support up to uh, 12,000 euros per project, also technical support, which includes ad hoc mentorship uh, program for the implementation of their uh, business ideas through different uh, mentors and advisors, and also networking uh, support to, to promote their uh, projects. The definition and the details of this program will be concluded in January, taking into account the needs of the selected proposal, adapting the program to their uh, needs. So uh, in general terms, and, and with uh, this I'm finishing, Rachel, what uh, ho we hope uh, to, to help uh, these 30 SMEs to turn their business model into a more sustainable and circular one, contributing to that uh, necessary uh, change in the um, in the model of textile and fashion industry and through the accelerator and also through uh, the organization of communication events as part of our project where we can debate, generate ideas and raise awareness. We hope to contribute to taking a steps toward the achievement of the achievement of the some of the goals of uh, for 2013, such as the responsible consumption and production, for, uh, for instance. And I finish here. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you all. These are four wonderful projects that are empowering and advocating for SMEs and designers to get into the fashion industry and make the change we are looking for. Um, so now in the interest of time, we will start our round table, um, which will be a bit of a rapid fire question. Um, before we do that, we would like some more audience participation and another Slido question. Again, what do we need more of to achieve the 2030 SDGs? This time we're asking between collaboration and competition. And as we are receiving those answers, um, our first question, everybody will have about 30 seconds here to maintain our timing. So give us your best pithy, succinct answer. Um, the first question we want to think of, where does the power to act and make change lie? Is it the responsibility of consumers or producers to make the shift toward a circular economy? Can we first hear from, um, our presenter from S4 Fashion, Ingrid Willems. Is it the producer or the consumer who has most responsibility quickly? Very, very difficult question. They both have responsibilities. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I thought you gave me 30 seconds. So indeed, I, I mean, um, of course, I think building awareness is what we all need to do so that consumers really understand what they're buying. I think there is still a lot of work to do, but the largest impact, of course, is on the manufacturing side. That's for sure uh, the fact. Excellent. Thank you, Ingrid. And Fiora, quickly, about 30 seconds. Who would you say is most responsible, consumers or producers? Fiori? I'm very sorry. Can you come again? Sorry, you were, uh, I lost the... No problem, Fiori. The question is, um, who is most responsible for making the shift toward the circular economy, consumers or producers? Yeah, to be honest, what we've seen uh, today uh, is that consumers have pushed a change. So with the fashion revolution, uh, who made my clothes, watching my clothes and all the global campaigning happening uh, since uh, 24th April 2014, um, where, um, you know, uh, a few people knew the reality behind clothes uh, that we consume, uh, the, the reaction was by consumers and consumers have pushed, especially Generation Z, uh, for this big change in brands. And this is how we see nowadays, especially after COVID, uh, because as we predicted and we, um, and, and, and we were proven uh, correct, COVID, um, unlike other uh, crises, made people more sustainable, turned them more to sustainability, even though we would, some people were expecting that, um, you know, we would, we would have to have cheap production um, and that would be a cost to sustainability. But on the contrary, although of course there was a huge 
uh, disasters in terms of human uh, rights, uh, with a million of workers uh, losing their jobs. Uh, but um, the consumers themselves had a very had a huge turn towards sustainability, and even an, a drop in the volume of clothes uh, they consume. So um, they realized that they don't need so many stuff in terms of volume. Um, yes. That is what uh, the data is also showing. Yes, thank you. That's that's a very interesting take, especially with the change in the world. Um, and now we'll pass on to you, Mikhail, quickly. Um, who do you think is most responsible, consumers or producers? Um, well, it's not really one or the other. But what, what I, I think from what we see from our own federation, so the top runners of European sustainable businesses, like the 5%, um, taking a company like... Uh, a collector of, of uh, used secondhand clothes. Because if you give them, I mean, I would even argue that there is a third player, which is the policy makers. But if you give them the right framework, then uh, companies would be encouraged to, uh, for example, scale up, you know, this type of collection scheme or, you know, th their business. And then of course, the, 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 the consumer would most likely not only get aware of, uh, of them, but they would also buy in and they would be at scale and so, more competitive so it's an interaction between those three and it needs to come from from up uh, from the from the market from the consumer but it also has to come down from the policy maker so it's there's not one or the other it's it's all, all three of them synergetic relationship Absolutely. Say. Yeah. excellent and finally from you Sharam can you share who you believe is most responsible yeah, I think it's a simple question, but uh, leaves open the room for debate and uh, the easy answer is to say both but uh, I have to say, I mean, of course, it's all agents have to are responsible. I totally agree. Um, however, I think if we look at the history a little bit in the last 50 years, what we see is that the producers, especially the large producers who, let's say, are focused on large, you know, the fast fashion as we know it today, are the ones that are most responsible in terms of the, the effect, the impact, the negative impact they've been having. Um, so I think they would be the most uh, empowered to be able to make the change. However, what we see is the bottom up, uh, this young generation that you said, Fury, and everybody is having huge influence as we see people like Walmart are having a section on secondhand clothes in their store, which they see as an opportunity to even attract people to buy them new clothes. You know, I was reading an article, but, uh, you, you know, the thing is that um, they are pushing uh, the large producers. However, I think the real disruptive players are the small designers, the small producers, the smaller industries in Europe. And we have to really protect these smaller industries in Europe that are doing a very tough job of raising the bar, raising the standards, putting sustainability standards that the policymakers are pushing in Europe, but have to compete with products coming from outside Europe that don't meet those standards and are lower cost, you know, and uh, don't have to really stand up to that. So on one hand, we have this play between the different uh, players. We have a very interesting situation. Uh, but I think this is what they call the emerging fourth sector of purpose, impactful organizations that are rising out of Europe and, and you know, in America and other parts of the world. Um, I think they would be, uh, they need to be protected, you know, and the consumer, they're responding to the new generation. Um, and I think that the, the big companies really have to change their practices and rise to the bar. Great answer, Sharam. And you uh, jumped into our, our last question, actually, which is a great introduction. Before we ask that last question, I would like to introduce the final Slido question for our audience. Again, what do we need more of to achieve the 2030 SDGs? Is it incremental change or systemic change? And with that, our last question is, um, does this change need to come from top down or bottom up? Are we looking to policymakers and activists? Or are we looking to local SMEs um, and, and consumers to make the change? Um, so we've already covered a bit of that, which is wonderful. Um, I'll open that first to Ingrid again. You're on mute, Ingrid. Yeah. I saw it. I assume that the 30 seconds we have in Belgium is not the same length as in other countries. So I will give myself a little bit more opportunity as well here to answer, I assume. Um, 
you know, being an entrepreneur myself, I strongly believe that this is a bottom-up thing. It really will come from people, you know, we've heard a lot of things before already, but I really strongly believe that it are the creatives, it are the designers, it are the entrepreneurs who really, you know, use all their power, all their passion, all the purpose, um, you know, they have in order to make change happen, uh, in order to really have an impact. Um, policy making is necessary, governance is necessary, but I, I really believe that this movement can only come uh, from really people that have that power, that creativity, that energy to make that shift happen. And I think this is also what I like very much about the Cosmo project, that it is not like a big sum for one company. It's a lot of very small companies that are invited to work together to really bundle those, uh, those powers they have, this knowledge they have. And as was said in the beginning, the project growth is a very nice example of that, how this industry, how this movement, how this ecosystem of circular fashion SMEs and designers is really growing. And I'm really happy to see those four projects. I'm sometimes a bit sorry that we don't work closer together because I really think all together we have a huge impact to create in the fashion industry. Excellent, Ingrid. You a bit more. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. We will pass it on to Fiori now. What is your thought, top down or bottom up? Um. I, well, my, it's always bottom up <laughs> with me. So I, um, I, I believe that uh, change is happening bottom up, but uh, as it was very well mentioned uh, by Sharam and Michael and all the panel, uh, it is uh, systemic. So uh, when you talk about systems, you talk about a holistic, change so you need all stakeholders um so you uh, in order for the change to happen making uh you need organizational uh structure systems and uh, norms and social norms uh, you need uh, the individual profile of the entrepreneur uh, so um and social yes and, and the social uh, dimension uh, so for the change to happen, it has to be systemic and everybody has to work together. Uh, I've seen, uh, because um, my area of research uh, was uh, so social entrepreneurship, and I've seen that uh, in the countries where uh, policy making actually supports uh, the, the growth of social enterprises, they uh, thrive like in the UK. Uh, in countries like Greece, where, when this didn't happen, uh, a lot of social enterprises were uh, created, but then after a couple of years, you know, you can merely find any of them standing. So we, we need the bottom up so that it has enough um, base and platform to maintain itself. I understand, Fiori. Thank you for that. And we'll pass it on to Mikhail again. Yeah, thanks, Rachel. Yeah, I mean, I already said it. I think I already made my point. So it's, um, of course, bottom up. But that's what we see with our members. They give the reference to the consumers. If they're visible, they give a ref good positive reference to lawmakers that their business model actually does work. Um, and over time, it's just a long, in, in, in long term, they will be the drivers of the systemic change. But it's not a prerequisite. There's companies out there who are actually pretty successful with the linear and the linear economy which is on the decline we haven't reached the tipping point i'm dreaming of this uh, every day but uh, i see it coming excellent thank you and finally before we break out into our room sharam let's see if i can do a belgian 30 seconds and this thing <laughs> So I would say um, yeah, top down, I mean, the, the, uh, it's very important that what the EU is doing is leading the world on policy, on directives and creating this uh, framework, which I would say, if you compare it to other regions in the world, uh, is fantastic what the, the European Commission is doing with the EU. But at the same time, um, you know, the change, I could totally agree that bottom up changes where the, it's happening. And that's why with Circo Acts, one of the important uh, emphasis we put, of course, circular, but the co in the middle, is a collaborative accelerator, the cooperative accelerator, the co-design, the co-creative, and the community. So all that co, the communities, um, you, you know, is fundamental, um, the working together. And I think this, uh, Cosme, as you already said, is very important. 
for that, um, uh, I think that the, we, we need to do advocacy, like Fiori said, because in the same way as the large older players uh, are doing advocacy, uh, as we saw with the COP, for example, uh, to keep some of the system, uh, you know, to, to be dragging, uh, to be honest, towards the old model for the transition to not happen as fast as uh, we would like it to be. In the same way, we need to come together and create agency to, to really uh, support the European Commission to say, look, there's a lot of us here who want to make a change and we know how to do it. Uh, so just the last point, um, over 30 seconds, but the DG Grow, uh, the, the idea of how we define growth is very important because you can grow in many ways. You can grow uh, as a community of zebras, like we say, not unicorns. You know, unicorns grow like that, but we call them accelerator of zebras, you know, where the, you can grow as a community, you can grow in resilience, you know, you can grow in, uh, in happiness, you know, in, in prosperity, in different ways of managing. So I think I'll be very interested to see the new uh, DG Grow policy for SMEs uh, coming out, you know, going forward in this new period. Thank you. Excellent. These are all such great questions that we can debate to end. Uh, I think the most important thing is that we are talking about them and collaborating. Um, it's wonderful to hear from all of these projects. Thank you all for sharing about what you're doing for your answers to these questions. Um, and with that, I would like to pass the floor to Sharam to enter into the breakout rooms. Okay, uh, so how long uh, do the uh, breakout rooms will last? Sorry. And I believe it's uh, another 20 minutes to finish the, the program. Um, I have it here, maybe Natalia can help me. But uh, we have, um, uh, well, I can put that in the chat to confirm to you um, how long it's going to be exactly. But the idea of the breakout rooms is for each of the four projects to open a room and the people who are participating, including ourselves, of course, if we're moderating the, the room, we can't leave. But um, we could join the other debates as well. Um, so everybody can move around the different rooms. Uh, and the way to access the room is to go to the bottom of your screen where you, know, you should have the option of the room to choose from once it's enabled. And then you would choose the where the square, the little squares are, there are four squares in a box. At the moment, I can't see it on my screen, but once it's no. activated, the rooms I don't think haven't been set up yet, but once it's activated, we will join the rooms and we'll start participating. Then you can leave the room. Uh, be careful not to leave the entire meeting, it gives you an option. Um, so you say, I wanna leave the room to go to another room or I wanna go back to the main room. Uh, that's basically how it works. Um, and uh, that, that way we can have a little bit of mingling with the different projects. And just to mention that the idea was that we have an action oriented networking. So based on the challenges we talked about, based on the spirit of collaboration, and the idea is how do we work together? How do we network? Not from this way of how do I get the most out of this, of course, you know, but how do we contribute to these challenges together? And how can we network together, um, you know, to, to be able to meet those challenges? So we can see if the breakout room is activated. I would maybe, say thank as you. I said, this oh, now it is. Yeah. I I have to leave uh, for another meeting, which is starting two minutes. So, uh, but if you have any question, you have my my address, so you can address to me, and I will try to 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 reply. But unfortunately, in two minutes, uh, I have to attend another meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. sure, sure. Thank you. Okay, so is there anybody else that's going to be helping with the room with the small but perfect? You can now join the rooms that it's activated for other people while we have this discussion. Um, you can start joining the rooms in the breakout room option. So is it you, Fiori, that has to leave? You said no? I have to go as well to attend a biomimicry webinar. I hope the breakout room. Okay, is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rachel. So Thank you. It's, it's been very nice to have you. and Look forward to collaborating in the future. Thank you.